Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain over that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. Welcome to another episode of Yu Gi Oh! In Depth. In today's episode, we are covering Centurion. Yes, the King Calamity Turbo deck. In case you have not seen any other episodes of Yu Gi Oh! In Depth and there's a deck that you want to learn, definitely go check out the other videos. I believe I have a playlist up on the channel. Uh, and also be sure to let me know down in the comments below what other decks you want me to cover in the future, whether it's, I don't know, Cyber Dragons or, I don't know, Orcus for the two people that still play that deck. Whatever deck you want me to cover, Flunder, you know, whatever the case may be. So do let me know. As always, we're going to be starting off with some test hands as we talk about the Centurion deck. The Centurion deck can be played a couple of different ways. It's a brand new uh, archetype out of Valiant Smashers and is known primarily for being a King Calamity Turbo Dot Deck Go Burr. By that, I mean it wants to go first, it wants to establish a level 12 Synchro Monster, usually Centurion Legadia, and then on the following turn, make a Crimson Dragon on the opponent's turn, and then tag that out into a King Calamity and win the ball game from there. There are a couple different ways that you can play the deck. Uh, there was a Naturia version running around in OCG. I tried that version, it wasn't very good. I saw some people messing around with Dogmatica, which proved to be a bit inconsistent. People have also been using the Horus cards because you can insulate yourself from disruption with things like Hope Harbinger, um, or you can also use the Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. The Horus monsters I found to be a bit inconsistent. You know, if you're opening up any of the Horus monsters that don't do anything in the hand, aka not Imseti, and you don't have a way to get to stand up Centurion, or your way to get to stand up Centurion gets negated, then you're sitting with bricks in your hand. So I have opted, which I already have the deck profile up on the channel, to be playing a 40 card build of pure Centurion with 15 hand traps. And now you might be thinking, Avery, that sounds inconsistent AF. Uh, there are times where I've opened up a hand of like five hand traps. But then if I'm going second and I draw into, say, like a Centurion Primera, well, I've just had five interruptions for my opponent's first turn. Ain't no way that they're going to be able to play through five hand traps, and it's actually really comical. I've had hands where I've opened up, like, Ash, Imperm, Valor, and a Moonlit Chill. Like, four hand traps, and, like, my fifth card is, like, I don't know, Primera. So even if they, like, say Valor my Primera, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm just going to pass turn, and I've got four hand traps in my hand. So... With that being said, as always, I like to do test hands and show you how the deck is played. So we've got Talents, Ash, Terraforming, Stand Up Centurion, and TC Boo. <clears throat> You're going to have to excuse me. I am finally getting over a cold. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you know I feel like I've deep-throated a cactus. Pause. Uh, so, yeah, we've been dealing with that, so I apologize in advance for also any jump cuts that you see because your boy may have to cough. Um, so this is a tech card that I've been using, TC Boo. You play a bunch of different monster types in this deck, Trudea specifically being a pyro. So once we get Bonfire in Maze of Millennia, you can use Bonfire to search for the Trudea and get your engine going. Um, yeah, I mean, this this is a busted hand. Also, this deck doesn't really lose to Droll. I have people Droll and Lockbird me all the time, and I laugh my ass off every time because the only thing that you're stopping, depending on how we open... Uh, is my draw one off of Legadia, which I don't care about because I'm about to King Calamity you to next week. So with this hand, let's just go ahead and show off how we would play it. Um, I'm not really too worried about draw because of the hand that we have, plus we have talents. So I usually try to avoid activating terraforming out of the gate because if I search for stand up and my opponent uses draw on me, then I when I go to summon Primera, I'm not gonna be able to get a search. We already have stand up Centurion though. So I am gonna go ahead since we have talents activate the terraforming. If they ash us, we don't care. If we if they droll us, we don't care because we already have the stand-up in our hand. 99% of the time, you're going to use stand-up to go for Primera unless you already open it. So we're going to search uh, stand-up. We're going to activate stand-up. Um, again, if they use droll or something, you can use talents to rip another card out of their hand. So talents is definitely a three of in this deck. Uh, you don't really need thrust because thrust isn't really getting you to anything all that great. Uh, so in this case, we activate stand-up. We're going to use stand-up's effect. Go ahead and pitch the other stand-up out of our hand because really once you get the first one established, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't have any of the names. <clears throat> so we're going to go for Primera. Um, 
The effect that people always forget about Primera is that when it's in the back row, treat it as a continuous trap, your level 5 and higher Centurion monsters can't be destroyed by card effects. Also, a ruling that you should know about with stand-up Centurion, it's the first line of text, and people don't read it all the time whenever I'm testing on EDO Pro. It says, this card cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects while you control a Centurion monster card. Now, the way that it's ruled currently at the time of making this video is that even if you don't have a... Um, Centurion monster in one of your main monster zones or extra monster zone if you summon Legadia because of the fact that we have a Centurion monster card in our back row it's being treated as a continuous trap but its original type is a monster if, if this was just our board stand up Centurion still cannot be destroyed so if you just have this in the back row or you know no Centurion monsters in your monster zones you still have a card that's originally treated as a monster card Therefore, stand-up cannot be destroyed. That's how it's been ruled, at least from what I've seen in the OCG and from what I've looked up online. I could be wrong. Maybe you're watching this video a year after it's been made and the ruling's different. But just keep that in mind. The time you're making this video, that's how it's ruled. We're going to go ahead and activate Premier. We're going to summon it out in defense because, with my luck, something's going to happen if it's in attack mode. We're going to activate its effect. In this case, we do not have access to Trudea. Um, if the opponent were to negate this at this point, you know, if they didn't negate anything else... Um, if they did droll us, then yeah, we would be kind of hard pressed because at that point we would have to go like activate stand up, pitch stand up, go for Trudea to get to Primera that way. And then we wouldn't be able to have a search. So we would just have to load up the Trudea for next turn. So that could, it, this is how it could kind of play differently if they hand trap you. Again, we're just going to assume that they don't. Um, but that is a good example of like how one hand trap farts on this deck and it can lose, especially if you just brick really hard and like your only opening play is Primera and you have nothing else. Um, but anyway, we're going to add the Trudea to hand. We're going to activate, or we're going to normal summon Trudea. We're going to activate its effect, putting itself and another Centurion monster from our deck into the spell and trap zone. So we're going to do Emmet 6. <clears throat> uh, we're going to activate Emmet 6. We're going to summon it to the field. Uh, we'll activate Stand-Up's effect here because why not, honestly? It doesn't really matter. Uh, we are going to summon the Legadia. I'd like to do the middle main monster zone just because I'm kinky like that, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is in the far left back row zone. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up, see what Legadia gets us. Legadia on special summon, not synchro summon. So if you use the phalanx to summon it, then you can do this again. Um, you can uh, draw a card. Or if you banish it off phalanx and bring it back, then you can draw a card. So we hit a Veiler. That's hot because we're already sitting on Ash as well. Plus we've got TC Boo, so we have all the interruptions. We're going to go ahead and set the TC Boo in our far right monster zone. <clears throat> and we're going to use Legadia's effect, which does not target. So they have to shotgun the Vice Steel. Um, to take a Centurion monster from our grave and put it to our back row. So we're going to put the Primera back here, which is fantastic. I apologize for the glare. My webcam is not the best. Uh, trying to get everything in a frame here. Uh, and we're going to end our turn. Now you might be thinking, Avery, this is a very basic, you know, board. You know, what is it that you're really doing here? Well, we've got our two monsters loaded up here. We've got Ash and Valor. We're sitting on two interruptions, plus a potential third with Tikaboo, which hurts so many decks in the meta right now. Um, so there's really nothing that we have to worry about. So now it goes to the opponent's turn. We go standby main phase. These can only be activated in the main phase when they're continuous traps. As soon as the opponent commits to an action, I like to wait until they've committed to an actual card on their board in case they drew into imperm. We don't want them imperming us. So they may set a card, set a monster. They could summon a Fenrir. Like, who cares? Uh, well, if they summon Fenrir, you have to be careful because they could, you know, banish your Crimson Dragon and shit. But that's a whole nother can of worms. Let's say that the opponent's playing Labyrinth. They set a card into their back row, or they summon, I don't know, Ariadne. Even if they summon Fenrir, luckily we have the Veiler to negate its banishing effect, so we're fine. But if, if you don't have something like that, then you have to kind of play correctly. Even though this is a Calamity Go Bird deck, you do need to still play out your turns correctly. You can't just turn your brain off and play. It's not as crazy skillful as needed like compared to Tier Element, but you still need to really know what you're doing. So let's say that the opponent's playing whatever. It doesn't matter. They... Play a card on the field, like, say, a field spell. Cool. Activate Primera. Chain Link to response. No response. Chain the uh, Trudea. And now we're going to go ahead and use the effects to summon them both out, preferably in defense mode. Uh, we'll use the Trudea's effect to increase its level by four. 
Um, so the chain resolves trigger effects since Primera was summoned. Chain link one, stand up chain link two. We're gonna ask the opponent for a response. If they don't have a response, we're gonna chain the Emmet six in our graveyard, which now allows us to target a Centurion monster on our field, put it in the back row, treat it as continuous trap, and summon this. That's only during the opponent's turn. So we'll put the True Day under the back row to summon Emmet six. That way we have the True Day a follow up for next turn. We're gonna go ahead and synchro summon. This is where you bring out the Crimson Dragon. This is my one proxy because it still doesn't come in the damn mail and I'm very irritated about that. Uh, and then the Primera is gonna resolve giving us a search. You're typically gonna go for Bonds here, um, either Bonds or Phalanx. Uh, it really depends on the situation. You could also search Stand Up if you really wanted to, um, but I would think at this point you don't really need it. So the chain's gonna resolve. The way that this works is that it's going to resolve. You're going to ask the opponent if they have any trigger effects that they wish to activate. If they say no, then you're going to say, on a new chain, activate Crimson Dragon target Legatio response. If they... So the way that it's currently ruled, if they book a moon this, uh, this will still go back to the extra deck. If they book a moon this, it is no longer recognized as level 12. You can't bounce back the Crimson Dragon. So if the opponent books this, thinking it won't bounce back, uh, then you just proceed to grow a chub because they're bad and they don't know the ruling. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something good to keep in mind if, if you are uh, paying attention in this video, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so anyway, we target our level 12. We, of course, go for the hot red dragon arch fleeing King Calamity. Uh, we're going to activate Calamity's effect to turn off their effects, and if they try to negate it with something, you laugh in their face because you can't respond to this thing. It specifically says cards and effects cannot be activated. <clears throat> by your opponent in response to this effects activation. So you negate everything, you sit there with a shit-eating grin, you maybe even flip this up just to mess with the opponent even more. I apologize about all the jump cuts, ladies and gentlemen, I'm losing my voice slowly but surely here. Um, even if they try and like use monster effects before you get to the King Calamity, you've got Ash and Valor to slow them down uh, talents for the previous turn, of course. So, and then at this point, end phase, Legatia is going to give you back your Primera. And you pretty much just OTK from here. You can follow up with Trudea and Primera. You've got the bonds to put the Emmet 6 in the background, just swing for game, or you go into like Final Sigma. You can go into Cosmic Blazar. Um, it, really, this is where you should be winning. This is like your victory formation. Now, some things I want to talk about since, like I said, this deck isn't super complicated. There have been times where instead of going into King Calamity, you instead go for Cosmic Blazar. Now, why would you ever do this uh, instead of going for the King Calamity? Well, that's because of the fact that, especially if you saw the opponent's hand with something like Talents, like you saw in our hand before, um, you won't always want to have the King Calamity up on the field. Um, you know, if you're going against something like, say, Labyrinth, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Labyrinth is mostly just going to be setting trap cards. Or they're going to be activating the IKEA furniture out of their hand. And then once they end their turn and it comes back to you, now their stuff is live. So if you know you're going against something that isn't really playing a whole lot of cards on the field in their first turn, this is going to be your better bet. Especially if, for whatever reason, the opponent is saving Super Poly for like after you drop out the King Calamity or like on the Crimson Dragon or like they're saving some sort of negation for once you bring this out. Um, like I ran into a situation where my opponent had Kurakara, which I wasn't expecting. It was against Vanquish Soul. I'm like, okay, this guy's playing Kurakara. He's the one dude in the room doing that. Had I played the Cosmic Blazar, I probably would have won instead of the King Calamity, but I figured King Calamity was better. So King Calamity is very matchup dependent. Uh, there have been times where instead of making King Calamity, I've made Cosmic Blazar and I've won the game just because the fact that this is an Omni Negate. Not only that, but it's a Summon Negate. It can negate a Summon, it can negate attack, and any attack in, in the battle phase. It can negate a card effect. Uh, th this card is absolutely insane and it vanishes for cost. So it's, it's kind of hard to deal with it unless you do something like you Chalice it or something. Um, so do keep that in mind. So uh, with that out of the way, um, let's go ahead and dive into the next hand. All right, I've just been shuffling this up here for the past couple of minutes. So hopefully that first combo kind of shows how the deck is supposed to be ran. Um, you know, if the opponent has interruptions or something, you obviously play it differently from there. Um, but hopefully I can hit a hand here that's more for like going second with like a bunch of hand traps. Uh, let me flip this around here. So we got two, 
three, four, and five. So yeah, no, this this hand is not very good. You're basically hoping that you know droll is enough to shut the opponent down, and that psh, wow, okay, yeah, you're drawn into a third roll. So here's the issue with uh, playing fifteen hand traps. Sometimes you end up with situations like this. Um, where you're just opening up multiple hand traps. Or you open up nothing playable. I've had hands where I open up multiple hand traps, and like instead of stand-up in Primera, they're just more hand traps, and I'm sitting with the talents. It does happen. Um, is this the worst thing in the world? Let's just assume that you know we used one of our drolls here to draw the opponent. Uh, and then you draw into this. Depending on the matchup, droll may be enough to shut them down. You do also have a talents of your own, so you can go like summon Primera, activate the effect, if they don't use something like Imperm, then you can Talents to either draw two. That's what's great about Talents in this deck, is that you can just dig for more gas. In this case, we'd be hitting Phalanx and Primera, so not the best thing in the world. Or you just rip a card out of their hand, because you do have Stand Up, so you can just pitch an extra Droll, and then there's your gas. Because really, these are the only two cards you ever need to see. It's, you know, people say it's 1.5 card combos, and yeah, because you need a discard fodder for this. Um, but... In an instance like this, it's basically a two-card combo because, you know, you're already seeing the Primera and the stand-up. So opening up all these hand traps isn't the worst thing in the world because people say, oh, well, you need discard fodder for this deck. That's why you play the Horus cards, or that's why you need to play Volcanic Shell, or that's why you need to play Fenrir. But in reality, these are your discard fodder. You know, if you're going second, you can use the hand traps to stop the opponent from playing. Any sort of extras you have are just icing on the cake, especially if you open up multiples of the same name. Hell, I've done it with talents. If I open up multiple talents, I'm playing three of them, I'll just use the stand-up and pitch a talents. It might give away that I have talents in my hand, but, like, the opponent's going to have to hand trap me or negate something if they don't want to deal with a Legati and possibly a King Calamity or a Cosmic Blazar. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. That's what's great about um, Centurion is that you have so many flex spots in this deck. Like, I would argue, like, 24 to 25 non-engine slots in this deck. Like I said, I'm playing 15 hand traps and 3 talents, 3 TC Boo. You know, I mean, you have so much non-engine that you can deal with. Even with the extra deck, you have so many different options of cards to play. So, you know, you can really pants a lot of decks, especially after game 1 when you know what the opponent is playing. So, let's go ahead and dive into the next hand. All right, let's give this another shuffle here. And I actually want to, depending on how we open, I actually want to play out a scenario where, like, depending on certain matchups, certain moves that you make. You know, like, let's say that we're not in game one. Let's see, two, three, four, five. This is, I mean, this is playable. I mean, I can still kind of talk about what I want to talk about here. So, you know, let's say you're playing against something like Flunder. Obviously, you'd side out the Moonlit Chills for something else. But the reason why I say Flunder, or really anything that can't deal with a card unaffected by card effects, you may know where I'm going with this already. It, it This play just becomes an auto win. So we're going to do terraforming. We're going to do the typical play. You know, if, if they want to droll us, cool. Like, they can, you know, eat our ass proper. Like, it, it really doesn't matter. I honestly love whenever they droll us, because, like, especially if you have talents, it just makes it live, which in this case we do. So if they droll me, I'm like, cool, let me see what you're playing. Let me see if I can rip anything else. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go... Can I get that out of the glare? Yeah, we're going to go stand up. We're going to pitch the... Uh, we're going to pitch the Moonlit Chill, since this is once per turn. Uh, we'll go for the Primera. Activate uh, Primera, summon it to the field. Use Primera's effect. True Dea, if I could stop sounding so stuffy-wuffy. Allergies are a heck of a thing, man. We're going to normal summon the True Dea. Activate the effect, putting itself... And remember, it doesn't have to be a Centurion from deck. It can be one from your hand. So the Emmet 6 in my hand I could use. We're going to go Emmet 6. Activate Emmet 6 to summon. Then we're going to go ahead and Synchro. And we'll do... You always do Legadia. Like, I don't think that there's ever a time where you would not do the Legadia just because the draw one is so free. Um, and, like, if you're able to establish the Primera on the, fall, on the end phase, then, like, you're just good. Uh, so we're going to draw, we're going to hit Moonlit Chill, so the one that we ditched is right back in our hand. Um, we're going to go End Phase Legadia. Go for Primera. And if you're playing against something like Flunder, or something that can't deal with, spoiler alert, you summon these two. Put this back, summon this. Synchro into... Uh, I'm going to put this right here. Look, well, we'll put this down, we'll put this up. This is the extra monster zone, but yes, final Sigma. 
I love this card. People have been telling me to cut this card, and I never will. You know why? It auto wins against Flunder. Because the time we make in this video, the way that it's ruled is that you cannot use unexplored win on a fucking final Sigma. So if the opponent's not expecting it, then they crap their pants because they literally, Flunder especially, has no way to deal with the final Sigma. So keep in mind that you don't have to necessarily commit to Crimson Dragon. You can commit to any generic level 12 synchro that you can make, you know, whether it's final Sigma or instead of even going for the Legadia, we could have done final Sigma if you know that the opponent has no way to out something like this. I apologize about all the jump cuts. I'm coughing like crazy right now. But, you know, if you're playing, I would say specifically against Flunder because I know for a fact that they don't have a way to get something with 3,000 or more to out the final Sigma. The only way that they could out it, in theory, if they're even playing it, is to do Dreaming Town, like when you attempt to end your main phase, get out four birds, you pass turn, their extra deck is now unlocked, they can slam all four of their birds in your final Sigma into an Underworld Goddess. But if they're doing that, you're probably already winning, because all they have to give you is one turn. Because with that one turn, you know, if they can't out this final Sigma, they can't deal with the Legatia, whatever, you know, even if they do Unexplored Wind, Tribute it, like, you know, whatever, you're gonna have uh, Primera in the back row if they don't deal with the Legatia. And at worst case, you have Trudea. So even if they deal with the Legatia, you're gonna draw for turn and go Trudea, do itself, put, you know, a Primera from the deck into the back row, and you're just gonna steamroll from there, whether you make a King Calamity at that point, or Cosmic Blazar to help back up the, you know, final Sigma. All you need is that one turn, plus any other gas in your hand, and you're going to win the ball game. So that's what I mean by this extra deck being so flexible. Like, if you want to main deck Fenrir's, which I don't recommend because then you're walking into a Nibiru in game one. Like, that's the beauty about this deck is that everything is in four summons or less. Um, you know, you could be playing, like, Psychic and Punisher, things like that. You could even be playing some level 8 synchros for Trudea and Primera because you don't have to increase uh, Trudea's level by 4 if you don't want to. Um, but I'm not really doing that. I save it more for Exceeds. Um, because what's great is that even if they do debarrier you, you have extra deck options. Like whether you want to do uh, Dweller, Boguska. <clears throat> because you play level 12s, you can hard make Sky Crisis and Zeus, which is really funny. Uh, and then you, of course, also have your uh, Link Monsters. You know, of course, Little Knight being good, Lina and Dark, because you play different attributes. Selene to summon a Spellcaster, so you can summon Primera and an access code, because it's just a good OTK card. So even if they debarrier you, it's not the end of the world. So what are some ways to kind of beat this deck? Great ways to beat this deck is with hand traps. I mean, if you're negating the Crimson Dragon and denying the opponent the ability to get to that King Calamity or Cosmic Blazar, you're probably going to win, depending on how you open Super Poly on the Crimson Dragon and the Legadia is a play because they are both light monsters. Um, you do have to keep in mind that Wave Hiking Caesar cannot stop these two from summoning themselves or the Emmet Six by extension because they're continuous traps. Don't let people cheat you when they're in the background and you're summoning them. That's by technically a trap card effect, not a monster effect. So it doesn't turn on talents or anything like that. Not until you use this effect to search or, you know, whatever. Um... Board breakers can maybe hurt. It depends if they King Calamity you or not. Um, I've seen some people try Kurokara because the fact that they King Calamity you, then you can tribute it. Summon out Kurokara, it's got 3,000 attack. But this thing's 35. Um, cosmic Cyclones really hurt because even though this can't be destroyed by card effects, you can still Cosmic the shit out of it. And then, you know, this is how they're going to make the King Calamity on your turn because this lets you uh, Synchro Summon if a monster is special summoned. Keep that in mind. If any player is special summons, you can use this effect to synchro summon using a Centurion monster. So, depending, again, on how this deck opens, one hand trap, like, you ash this. If they don't have a way to get to stand-up, they lose. Like, stand-up is the extender in this deck. Like, it's, it's really not that scary of a deck. What makes it scary is the fact that we can play 15 hand traps and just kind of laugh, you know? Or, like, we can play three copies of Talents with two Desires and then just hope that we don't hit bad off the desires. So people are saying like, oh, King Clamon needs to be banned, this and that. And I do agree it should be banned. Um, but this deck is basically just, I would say, Sky Striker 2.0. You just play a bunch of hand traps. And instead of being a going second deck like Striker, you're a going first deck. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what decks you want me to do in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.